So you want to learn how to rotoscope using Final Cut Pro. So you have chosen death. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can rotoscope using Final Cut Pro, and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to get a better roto, all without plugins. So what we're going to do is actually rotoscope this ball, and I chose a ball because it's very simple. So for the sake of tutorial, I'm probably going to have to film this like five or six times. I don't want to rotoscope like a hand or something like that. What I do have to say, I would strongly recommend that you actually rotoscope in motion rather than Final Cut Pro for a number of reasons, which I will try and explain along the way. So we have our ball here, and luckily, because it is a circle shape, we can actually use, if we go to the Shape Mask tool, we can drag that on, and the Shape Mask allows us to do very simple shapes very easily, rather than doing a draw mask and having to perfectly cut around the edge. So we'll just get a basic shape here of the circle, and this outer edge is going to be your feather, and you just wanna feather it very lightly. So we now have our ball in place. What we're gonna do is come over here to the view and we're gonna set it to original. So we can actually see where the outline is happening, but we can also see what's happening around the ball. And one thing I should say is if you're rotoscoping something a little bit more complex, find a part of the scene that has the entirety of what you're rotoscoping or when it's most complex. So if you have a really complex shape, make sure that it's at its most complex form before rotoscoping. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bunch of problems down the road without having enough points. So we have our ball here. We could animate just this circle, but I'm gonna actually show you how to do it with basic points. So we're gonna click on the convert to points, and then it will ask us if we actually wanna convert it to points, which we do in this case. And so you can see that our lines are now these solid red dots. And so we can have a little bit more control. You can see I have these handles, so I could drag it way out here if I need to. So what we're gonna do to animate these points is come over here to the control points panel. If we click down, we can actually see the positions of each of these control points. You can also come up here and see this keyframe button. We are going to click that. Now, in my experience, most of the time, it is better to add a keyframe in the control points rather than in transforms. However, they both have very different uses. So um, I will try and explain the transform is really good for animating the overall position of all of the points, whereas the control points is good for defining singular points. Okay, so we've added our first keyframe. Now you could technically skip forward a single frame and adjust the roto and skip forward a single frame and adjust the roto and it takes forever. Now that is a more accurate way to do it, but what I typically find is I actually have better results by skipping forward 10 frames. So if we push shift and right arrow, we will have jumped forward 10 frames on the timeline. Then we can select a single point, push Command A, and that will select all of the points and drag them to where the ball has moved. So what you do throughout the shot is you just keep skipping 10 frames. You adjust the points as needed. So if they start to get a little bit off and then you skip forward another 10 frames and you just keep doing that throughout. After we've done the entirety of this shot, we can go back and find the points where it doesn't quite line up with the mask and then we can adjust it and you typically have a better roto. That is what I'm gonna do. It's gonna take me a while here, but I'll just show you a really sped up version of what is happening. Okay, so I have gone through and rotoed this ball, and now we can actually see the finished result. So we're gonna come over here again to view and change it back to composite. So if we play through, we can see how our mask is working. And you can see there's a few points where it gets off, but we will just go through and adjust that accordingly so that we get a much cleaner roto. So what we'll do is we will move forward until we start to see an edge, and then we will just adjust it. And then we can keep moving forward a few frames and adjust it accordingly. Okay, so I've gone through and I've corrected some of the edges and it's admittedly not perfect. Um, there's still some messy edges, so I could continue to go through and refine that as needed. However, for the sake of the length of this tutorial, I'm just gonna have to call that good. 
But what we can do from there is actually work a bit with the feathering to cut off some of the edges and that'll clean it up a bit and it'll give it this nice soft edge. So that is working a lot better. And let's see if we go ahead and zoom out, we can see the full picture. So we've got our ball kind of floating here. Now let's say we wanna place it into um, maybe another scene. So we can go ahead and import some other footage. So after we've dropped our ball into our scene, let's say we wanted to match the colors. Now this doesn't always work perfect, but it actually worked quite well for this. So we could go over to the magic wand and click match color and then just select the scene under it. So now our whites match relatively well and our dark areas match relatively well. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. You could also push command six and get a lot more detailed with your editing just to get it to match, which is gonna be very, very important for making something look like it's part of the scene. Now, this is why I would recommend that you actually rotoscope in motion. Unfortunately, in Final Cut Pro, let's say we wanted to add another mask to this. So we'll just look up the draw mask. And let's just say there's like an additional ball over here that I want to also cut out. If I were to click over here and roto that, what it's going to do is draw from this secondary mask and not reveal the first mask over here. So that is a problem because oftentimes it's much better when you're doing rotoscoping to do shapes. So if you were to rotoscope perhaps a person, you would wanna start with their head and then after that rotoscope their shoulders and then rotoscope their arms and just do it individually rather than having one large rotoscope shape. So in motion, you can actually have multiple masks working together. Whereas in Final Cut Pro, you can only have one at a time. However, you can, if let's say maybe if I bring in a shot of a donut and we needed to rotoscope out the center of the donut as well. We could add another shape mask. We could actually invert this mask. So now the center of the donut will be chopped out. So you could go through frame by frame, chop out both the center of the donut and the outer edge. So that is something you can do in Final Cut Pro. But again, I strongly recommend that you actually do the rotoscoping in motion for more complicated subjects. So I will definitely have a more detailed tutorial on that soon if that interests you. Hopefully that was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button and consider subscribing. And I will see you on Monday for a Motion Monday tutorial.